Okay, so the next thing we need to do with our React app is add some state. We need a way for the app to remember stuff that isn't just hard-coded in like the recipes. And you may notice from looking at the last recipe example that there aren't any objects anywhere. It's all functions. So you may be wondering, where is there to store anything? Where could we store the state? So one choice that you may not have thought about is using something called a closure. And I'm going to give you a rough idea of how that works. So if we look at this code here, I have a function called make state. And inside of that function, there's a local variable called current. And it will just, for now, just hang on to whatever value we pass to the make state function. But also inside of make state are two other functions. There's a get function that just returns that current variable, and an update function that lets us set that current variable to a new value. Now, I'm sure this looks odd if you've never seen nested functions before, but, but hang on, I'll, I'll explain. So now, what make state returns is those two nested functions get an update. And this is where interesting things start to happen because the get and update functions both reference that local variable current. So by returning those functions from make state, then that means we need to hang on to that current variable somehow. Now, if you think about the normal way variables come in and out of scope in Java, that might not make sense at first because if this was Java, when the make state method ended, then all of the local variables would be out of scope and, the, and would be disposed of, or in C, they would get popped off the stack. But in a language like JavaScript or Ruby, there's this idea of a closure, which means when the make state method ends, if there's functions nested inside of it that still need some of those local variables, those local variables are wrapped up and saved in something called a closure. And we can use that closure to hold on to data for us for use later. So that's what we're doing here. So I'm calling the make state method and I'm passing it a value 55. And so that 55 goes into that local current variable, but then I save off the get temp and set temp functions. Notice I'm doing this using that array deconstruction technique from the previous video. Now, because I still have handles to the get temp and set temp functions, which both reference current, then the runtime system of JavaScript will hold that current variable off to the side for me. And then just for a good measure, I did the same thing with humidity. Each call to make state creates a different closure. So since we're calling make state twice, once for temperature and once for humidity, there's two separate closures, two separate copies of current, so two separate places to store the temperature data and the humidity data. So now when I run the program, the first thing I see is that I get my initial temperature and humidity back. And I get access to that by calling the get temp and get humidity functions. But now I call the set temp and set humidity functions to change that current variable. And because it's safely put off to the side and not getting destroyed or pushed off the stack or anything, there is actually data there that can be changed. So when I do a second print statement, I see the updated versions of temperature and humidity. Now, in this simple example, you may be wondering what this buys us because, of course, we could have just had a temperature and humidity variable. But keep in mind that we're using this technique in a much bigger application with many different components and parts. And so we want to have a safe place to store data that exists beyond the call of a specific single function. Now, this isn't exactly what React is doing. React has a lot more complicated things happening under the hood but I wanted to at least give you an idea. When you see the use state method called in React and you're wondering how a function call can hold on to stuff, this gives you an idea of how it's done. And with that, we'll finally move on to putting state into the recipe app.